Hello, so in this one I want to do a crescent slash build. I'm gonna convert it to fire, but I'm also gonna show you how to do a physical one. The difference be between those two is not big. You get a little bit better zodiacs when you convert it to elemental, otherwise it's kind of similar. There are three bi big breakpoints for this build, so it's warrior shadow, decomposer unique shoulders tier 23 or transcended ones tier 34. And a water stick lacrima. It's basically a two-handed staff that gives you a lot of weapon range. So main things out of the way. Let's get into the build. Skill board early should look something like this. Let's start with the crescent slash. So we have savagery, warrior shadow, convert fire damage, additional fire damage, quick attack, and confidence. I'm keeping Warrior Shadow from early on, as this link is the biggest damage increase you can get. If you don't have a Warrior Shadow, you can use something like Iron Will instead or Find Weakness, and you can also use Slaughter. You can switch this to any other link that you can buy early. Quick Attack and Confidence in here. These runes are good as long as you are not hitting 5 attack speed. If you are getting close to 5 attack speed, you can switch this to something else. On Illusion Axe, I have Extract Energy, Convert Fire Damage, and Dampen Resource Cost. For movement abilities, it's Roll, Leap Attack, and Disarm. Fighter's Rot for uh, Attack Enhance with Enhance Dura enhance Effect, Increased Duration, and Time Acceleration. Siphon Life for Defense Enhance with Increased Duration and, and Time Acceleration. Shadow Provocation is basically a damage multiplier plus an arm amplification, which is really nice because you don't have to go for that big armor. And you can use get something instead. So on the Shadow Provo, it's Shadow of Power, Hush It Shout, Lingering Shout, and Enhance Effect, Increased Duration, and Buff Activation when hit. So it would proc automatically every single time you get hit. Shadow of Justice with buff activation when ground control just to remove your CC. For attack seal, you can do seal of condensed elements early. This is a good choice. As you don't need as much critical on this build because Crescent Slash has implicit 15 critical chance on its tooltip. So you don't have to worry about your crit that much. Veil of Protection is the only way to decrease projectile damage taken. But remember, you want to use Wine Veil and not the Earth Veil. For Defense Seal, I picked up Elemental Domain, but you can use any. You can do Chaos Resist, phys Physical Domain, or even Elemental Resistances, whatever you need the most of the time. So I think this is pretty balanced early skill board you can have. Zodiac, so for this one, I'm gonna show you two ways how you can do this, but let's start with the first one. It's Strong Strike for Afros, Swamp for Natural Ignition, Jewel for some Diamond Body and Adorable, Stem for Fisted Element and Path of Element. Flash for hands quicker than light into muscle strength explosion. Rainbow for elaborate attack. You don't have to spend two extra points in here, but you can do it early game. A little bit late into the game, you will want to switch this one. This is also optional. Super speed is attack speed amplification, and if you have a lot of attack speed, you can remove this. Then into breath for sweep. So weapon range plus strike damage. Into Dust for Rock Collision, Weapon Range, and Thirst for Elements, just Damage Jump. Sensational Perfume for Attack Speed and Damage Jump. Artemis for Melee Damage Amplification. Stench just for Damage Jump. Good notes. Spider is for Confirm Kill, so you get damage. 10% damage jump against stunned enemies, and you're gonna stun with this build quite a bit later into the game. This one is optional, you can go for Power of Harmony if your stats are 200 and more, and you can go into the Will of the Strong if your strength is 500 and more. 
which on this build you can easily achieve. This one farming is simple, you want to go for the power of nature for additional physical damage. And this leaves, leaves us with a specialization, so we go for brilliance, acceleration, convert mana and powerful hit. Into vacuum, dimension and sharpness. I didn't spend two extra points in here, as there is no reason to. There are no good notes for you, on this build especially. So. You could spend 9 points in here after you finish the quest in the Soluto, but I spent those points on non-specialization nodes. And Pirates, you want to go for Elemental Damage Amplification, Damage Amplification against Crown Control enemies, and for additional Lightning Damage on every hit. If you don't CC as much, you just can go against Affected by Dot, because you're gonna be doing a lot of Dot. So, I think this is pretty default way to do it and I'm gonna show you another way to do it. So we're gonna remove these points from Artemis and from Scent and we're gonna go and pick up some call damage. Additional cold on every hit. And then we're gonna pick up those two points that I said earlier on the rainbow uh, on the rainbow traits and push those down into freeze rate and amplification against frozen enemies. This one you might not want to do too early into the game, but this should be nice damage increase. And at the same time, because you're gonna be able to do call damage and called status. On your rune mastery levels, you can pick up damage amplification against called status effects. So, this is not a bad choice either. So, that's how your zodiac should look like. For relics, there are two choices, but the relics you're gonna choose is gonna be the same. So, you want to go for Alyssa, pick up uh, enhanced fire energy as a passive. And on the active skills, you want to pick up Hellfire with cooldown recovery speed and Hellfire effect. Then you want to go into Shabda, pick up as passive Chaos Resist. And on the active side, if you don't want to use Hellfire and you don't really care about the damage taken increase on the mental stimulation, you can choose mental stimulation instead and you want to do cooldown recovery speed and mental stimulation effect. Mental stimulation is gonna be a little bit more damage, while Hellfire doesn't have that negative effect. Plus it gives you fire penetration, could be a little bit more damage, but you will need to craft some rings for extra Hellfire, but about that later. For the third one you can go Spica, for the passive effect is powerful damage, chance to deal the double maximum damage on hit, and for the last one it's basically default one, you want to go for the Boreal and pick up that HP, as the last one can only be level 15. So for charms we are a little bit in a, in a pickle, cause we don't have area tag. So the only ones we can use is Boreal, Castor, and Capri. How you choose to, which one you choose to pick up first doesn't matter that much, but I suggest to start either with Boreal or Capri, as Castor doesn't give that much damage amplification, and you're gonna benefit probably the most from Boreal, as it gives you also ammo amplification, and then from Capri for that extra fire damage taken decrease, and then you can go into Castor. For the charms themselves, as this build has kinda a lot of crit, I would say you can go for crit rate, crit damage, those two affixes, and for the third one is whatever you can get. But you don't have to aim on every single charm to get critical rate. You can actually pick up a little bit of maximized damage on on 
on hit or chance to deal the maximized damage that could be a little bit better but be careful do not lose your critical rate just to go for chance to deal maximized damage keep that in mind itemization so for this one it's gonna be a little bit different because as this skill has so much critical rate instead of going for a high critical base that is 13 on two handers sword, you're gonna actually go for nine what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have more base damage the crit is lower but the base damage is higher but if you're gonna go for this route be careful and check how much crit you have at before you're doing this because if you don't have that much crit you're gonna lose a lot of damage so i'm gonna show you what you want to roll on the weapon and it's really simple doesn't matter which base it is is it high crit base or it's low crit base you want to roll these affixes so the main one is gear critical rate this you want to get first then weapon attack damage multiplier then you can go into critical damage, fire damage flat, weapon damage flat, and then into weapon speed. If you don't have that much weapon range, you can actually pick up instead of weapon speed, or instead of any other prefix, you can pick up equipped weapon range. This node, the weapon range node, which is not a bad choice because it's going to give you more map clearing then for the neck you want to go for critical damage implicit neck on this one you can't do much you can pick up elemental damage multiplier and fire damage flat after that you can pick up whatever you need is it hp multiplier is it hp flat and on the suffix part just look for whatever you need stats resistances or hit rate if you lack a little bit of hit rate for the ring you want to look for attack critical rate implicit rings and on the rings themselves you want to roll attack critical rate, critical damage, elemental damage multi and attack speed multiplier which priority you want to do this depends on your stats I would say it's probably gonna be critical damage multiplier but you can do default way you can pick up critical rate, critical damage and then whatever you can get on affixes on other affixes you can go for hp if you need hp or even hit, hit rate if you want it to be more offensive but the other ones just depends on whatever you can get or whatever you need the most and for the armor you can you want to get armor multiplier or if you're doing dodge you you would want to get dodge multiplier this is the main one that I want to talk about and emphasize on this after that you can go for HP's flat, multi or even pick up even more armor depending on how much armor you're running right now this is really important on the suffix part you can go defensive for some resistances or offensive for some hit rate the only other thing I want to mention is the boots on the boots you want to get movement speed as there are not that many sources to get movement speed from and this is basically it when you're looking at gloves shoulders or helmet you kind of want to pick up the de the main defense first so i'm a multiplier and then just for some hps and uh, some resistances as this are non-authority items you can't do much about it for itemization i'm gonna keep it simple i'm talking about this in every single build so i'm gonna keep it short you want, if you can, you can do Boiler's Horizon if you have this one. It's gonna help you with your energies, which is really nice. And it can give you up to two max energy stacks. At the same time, you can use Capri's Heart if you have it. This is a nice for the energies. And this neck itself gives you a lot of damage amplification. Remember that one. It gives you crit damage and it gives fire damage on, on every hit. So this is really good necklace. If you don't have this one, Medal of Penance is not a bad, is not a bad choice as it, as it gives you convert mana and it gives you a decent amount of damage, attack speed and critical damage. 
The other thing I want to talk about is Will of Fire. It's a two-handed sword. And for this build, it works really well as it gives you fire energies on hit. So if you have Will of Fire, you no longer need to extract fire energies from your illusion axe and you can extract some other energies like lightning or cold depending on what you choose to do on your blood explosion. And this one gives you fixed max fire energy stacks. So with this Will of Fire and with the Alyssa Relic, you already can be at around 9 fire energy stacks and if you're using Boreal's Horizon, you are immediately at 10. And every single fire energy stack is actually gonna give you weapon range. So this is really good early weapon. And it, you can actually gamble this weapon in the shop, but I don't know how much gold you have. It's not really rare to appear from the shop, but if you don't have much gold, don't do it. It's just you have a chance to get this from the shop gamba. I mean the gold shop. This build has another breakpoint, damage breakpoint besides the warrior shadow. And that is unique shoulders called the composer contradiction. So what it does, it activates additional Crescent slashes to the sides and it dampens the crescent slash damage. But for this to work, you want to get as much weapon range as possible. As what's gonna happen, it's gonna start overlapping those additional crescent slashes that are to the sides. So you actually you're not gonna lose damage by equipping these shoulders you're actually gonna get a lot of damage if you can have enough weapon range. Remember that one. This is the cheapest version, the lower tier one. If you get the higher tier ones, those are much, much stronger. It's only 25% damage dampening. It still activates crescent slashes to the sides, but at the same time, it gives you a little bit more crit rate and crit damage on the shout skill. So yeah, remember this one. This is really important. You really want those shoulders, at least low tier ones. It's gonna make this build damage skyrocket, by the way. This is the first time I'm gonna talk about Lacrima in my build guides, but this is important. If you have a legendary two-handed Lacrima, and I would say you really want to have this on this build, because you can use watcher stick on your lacrima and this legend and this unique is gonna be make your crescent slash wide screen it's gonna clear full screens and even a little bit out of your screen so if you can use this weapon on your lacrima use it it gives you damage jump at the same time and it gives you insane amount of weapon range and if you're using this Lacrima, you can actually remove Savagery and instead pick up Concentrated Weapon Range Damage. This one is gonna dampen your weapon range, but it's gonna give you insane amount of damage amplification. And this weapon range dampening is not gonna do too much to you because Watcher Stick is so freaking big and it gives you so much weapon range that you're not gonna even feel the difference. So this is an important thing on this build because it changes, it basically makes it so fast mapping build and you even get so much more damage out of it. Remember this one. Skill board in the late game can look something like this. Let's start the Crescent Slash. You want to awaken this into Verity for extra critical rate. For the links, you still want to keep Savagery, Warrior Shadow, Convert Fire, Ign Ignition Explosion, Fighting Spirit, and Melee Damage Amplification. The most important thing to note is that 
you want to use ignition explosion only when you have awakened it to origin otherwise you won't be able to inflict burn and you want to inflict burn to actually benefit from the link itself and you want to awaken your melee damage amplification into origin so you could apply the dot as melee damage amplification without the awakening can't apply any dots so remember that one on water or shadow you have two choices you can go source or origin they both close in damage for fighting spirit you want to pick up uh, source awakening for more strike damage amplification because that's what we're looking for for savagery again you want to pick up more damage so origin for melee damage amplification i also added blood explosion and converted it to poison damage in order to extract some poison energies for attack speed you don't have to go poison damage if you are capped on your attack speed you can go cold to extract uh, elemental damage dampenings or you can keep it physical to extract some earth energies for physical damage reduction another change i added penetrating slash awaken it to rarity for plus two max use count and linked it, linked it with his arm penetrating slash should be enough for your mobility you don't need two movement skills for fighter's wrath i added decrease duration but remember decrease duration is only damage increase when you already have decent amount of duration and you can trade your duration into skill rune effects so test this one before you are actually using this and at some point strike damage amplification is gonna be better than elemental damage multiplier especially when you're running fire energies so seal of striking becomes better later into the game if you're doing um, physical build you can do this one that's what your skill board should look like on physical there is not many changes the only changes i did i, I added iron will but remember for the iron will you want to have around 24k hp otherwise you're not gonna get a damage amplification and for the awakening you can go for origin melee damage amplification plus damage amp if you have 500 and more strength and another one is grip strength awakening on this one is again you want to go for for damage so it's source it's not a big one but it's still a little bit of damage multiplier you don't have any other better choices but remember you don't want to use grip strength if you don't have that much hit rate as it dampens in your hit rate and that's big of a deal so when you use this one be careful and check instead of using grip strength or iron will you can also use mana storm if you want to but mana storm is gonna be really heavy on your mana consumption remember that one for the zodiacs you can do something like this this is really default choice afros i'm gonna show every single one forest jewel it's a little bit different than from elemental roots some of the things are similar i didn't change those so i'm going quick over those this is the same basically this is the same i'm keeping i'm still keeping cold damage Call damage you don't have to do call damage you can go for like lightning damage but cold is not a bad choice and pharma power of nature and sprouting energy if you if you choose to go for lightning you will want to remove these five points also for the specialization i picked up hammer but hammer is not the best choice but i don't want to get into deep into this so i'm keeping this one there are some other choices but those other choices require some other changes but hama still works hama is not that bad you can still do hama you can also actually instead of doing this 
you can go for the other spec for bonfire and pick up punishment together with strike amplification it's not gonna be more damage but you're gonna have more hp punishment actually works nice when you have a lot of attack speed it's not bad those basically are the main changes if you want to do this build physical if you choose to do lightning i'm gonna show you what you can do you can remove points in here Lightning is gonna be a little bit more damage as lightning gives you shock debuff and shock debuff is basically damage amplification. You can you can no longer use these points, so you can invest those points into these nodes. You should be able to have 500 strength as this build is heavily strength based, and then you have one extra point, and this point can go anywhere, anywhere you you want i'm gonna you can get man on every hit it's not a bad idea yeah something like this also which which one you choose it's not gonna be a big difference in damage it's more about um min maxing your your zodiacs and what fits you the best for itemization it's basically the same instead of picking elemental and fire damage you just want to pick up physical damage and physical flat GG's, this is everything I wanted to say. This build scales insanely good into the late into the late game, and if you have that water stick lacrima, you're gonna clear the maps with one click. So have fun, and I'm also gonna do this build after I upload this video for my alt. So see you on the next one.